Welcome aboard. This is the Property Show. Recently, we hosted an exciting, insightful and interactive first of its kind on a home expo. Later on, we'll be highlighting how this went down. Carrot has searched and established that the person or the institution that is purporting to sell you the land actually owns the land. When I think about Kenya Railways, what comes to mind is ease of transport, freight services, and of course, four and a half hours to the beach. Catch a candid one-on-one -on -one perspective on the number one transport solution. You can get into my largest place from Nairobi, and within four and a half hours, you're actually in Mombasa. Plus a conversation we started last week on protecting the integrity of buildings and tips to ensure developments are compliant. Following issues of health and safety, because remember, as people are working around that site, we have to ensure that the site is properly hoarded or secured from passers-by. The home ownership segment brings advantages of living in a gated community. For a person who is looking to buy a home, I would advise that you get a home in a gated community. Stay with us, we have a great lineup ahead. As always, there is something for everyone. Here at the Property Show, we are excited to have hosted a first of its kind Own a Home Expo in partnership with Standard Group, bringing together stakeholders across board under one roof, making the premier event a success. The expo kicked off with exciting live panel discussions on topical issues dominating the sector, from affordable housing solutions, financing, legal insights, plus a bird's eye view on projects available in the market. Let's get a sneak peek on how this went down. When it comes to using the circles to finance uh, buying of a home, you know, a lot of people uh, decide to do it in phases. And how prudent is that? Uh, thank you. What I want to say first, before even I comment on uh, that question, is that the issue of our decent housing is a fundamental right for every Kenyan, as captured in our constitution. And the question is to ask ourselves, you know, as a country, how do we enable, you know, the Kenyans to acquire their houses? Now, focusing on the circles and what they are doing is that uh, how the circle model operates and how members operate, sometimes you find a member will actually go for a loan to go and acquire a plot. Then after paying that loan, they will come for a second loan where they want now to start, you know, building the structure of the house. Some will put up in the foundation. And then because of uh, the limitation of uh, the funds, one will pay the second loan and then the third loan may be what they are going to use to construct, you know, the house. But what we are looking at uh, in support of uh, the big four agenda, the housing, we want to ensure that, you know, Members are able to access mobile facilities with the terms are actually friendly to their pocket as compared to what has been there. And one will be able to acquire a house either for him or her to live in that house or for rental. And that will be achieving the objective of uh, that right guaranteed by the Constitution. And uh, if we continue to talk about the affordability factor, um, it also boils down to making sure that you are getting your um, value for your money and a lot of times we've seen that people are being duped 
you know you think you own a home but when you go you realize you start construction someone comes by and says but i own this land and it's a tussle so you know when we talk about the legality here mrs mbugwa um how is it that a brand new homeowner somebody who is the first time homeowner can make sure that they've taken the right steps to ensure that that property that they're acquiring is legal in some instances the developers may make very rushed decisions where uh, you buy land and maybe you haven't completed the transactions and you find some people may start building on that land before they fully own it there are some instances and i think that's where you find sometimes families have come up to say no we haven't sold our land so you don't own it uh, so it is to encourage everybody to recognize that you're really affecting many people when you take their money to put up a structure on land that you do not fully own. However, it's very important that we can, as Kenyans, before you can put your money down, there is some due diligence that you need to do. And the due diligence can be done by using your agent, doing it yourself. Make sure that you can carry out, you carry out a search and establish that the person or the institution that is purporting to sell you the land actually owns the land. When it comes to dealing with professionals in this industry and how important that is, and I'd like you to comment on that. Today, I feel that a lot of time when you read people have been duped or people have bought property that do not have documents is because we passed some elements that are very important for example if you find a plot that is being bought please work with a lawyer we find that sometimes you can go to the land office and for some reason you get all the clearance but still later on you find that you are duped so it's important that you engage lawyers work with your own lawyer and we find that a lot of times when somebody is buying a property, they tend to work with the developer's lawyer because you feel that it's cheaper. Yet we know cheap is expensive. Property is a long-term investment, so it's important you work with professionals across board. If you're building, work with an architect. Make sure that you have your approvals in place. Make sure that the lawyers are involved. Make sure that there was an engineer so that we don't get into problems at later dates. And this is one of the things that we tell people. The real estate is easy to get into it, but make sure that you work with professionals. Engage all professionals across board. And uh, when we talk about the affordability of housing still uh, going there, 83% of the existing housing supply targets high income bracket. And actually, according to the KNBS, 2.9% of Kenyans earn over 100,000 a month. So we're really limiting the affordability factor here. And Mr. Kibara, how do you see we can bridge that gap? The biggest opportunity is in the truly affordable houses. For instance, for a country, anything around 3 million shillings, for Nairobi, maybe up to 5 million. And from what we've seen ourselves now as HF is that the projects that we have that are truly affordable in the region of, say, Nairobi, 4 to 5 million, we have more buyers than houses. But where we finance middle to upper, we have slightly more houses than than buyers and that just tells you something that is a huge demand an address demand in the truly affordable houses but the secret then lies with what kind of model do developers come come up with yes for instance the houses now we are working on with some partners these are houses that can be able to come in the market uh, in the region of about four four million and not in far-flung places you know in, in in closer places because we we have to use technology then that really reduces uses the price so that then we can be able to transfer that benefit to to customers and that's really f the future of, of housing then those big margins are no longer viable people or developers or investors have got to make do with finer margins and then you do volumes like for instance there's a project that has been going on we've been having conversations with some people uh, that is going to be 8,000 houses in a single location affordable houses so now when you do 8,000 houses economies of scale then kick in and so you can be able to deliver a house at much cheaper price per unit which you then uh, move to the a transfer to the buyer. Very informative insights from the panelists. Let's dive into what the expo had to offer. First, 
Walimu Kisaju Park. From Kenya shillings 2.9 million, you're set to get a home. And guess what? This project is complete and ready for occupation. Let's get the details on this expansive project. Walimu Kisaju Park is a, a housing project that uh, has 872 houses which are up for sale for our members and the public at large. We have one bedroom apartments, we have two bedroom apartments, we have three bedroom apartments, we also have townhouses which are three bedrooms as well. We have those that have a DSQ and those that don't have a DSQ. There's very exciting features at the park. Off Namanga Road, we have placed a Cabra Road all the way to the park. We also have uh, boreholes. There are two boreholes. You will never miss water in Kisaju Park. We have a water treatment plant. We have a commercial centre. We have a, a preparatory school. There is a swimming pool. And there's lots and lots of parking. On our home, Expo is a very good initiative by Standard Group in partnership with the Property Show and we have been able to reach quite a number of people who are interested in owning a home. Yes, and we like, we like what we see. Other investment options across the country were available. Let's listen to what Safaricom Investment brought to the table. We have a number of units in a, in a number of plots that we have today for you to consume and these are located in different regions. So the first one is Juja where we're selling an eighth an acre. An amazing product next to our previous Juja products we've had Juja 1 and Juja 2. It's three kilometers from Juja Farm Road and uh, there's water and electricity available in the area for connection. The second product is uh, still in Kiambu region, one that I'm passionately, uh, strongly attached to. It's called the Zaria Village. This is a gated community concept. We have a detailed plan for the product. It's a quarter an acre for the sizes. Each particular unit has access to water and electricity. There's serious amenities being done from clubhouse to swimming pools to man-made dam to tarmac roads. It's an amazing, amazing product. And it starts from 6.95. That was the off-plan prices. It, this might change but that is the details about the Zaria Village. Flexible payment period up to 12 months, interest free. So it's a great investment for you. It's a place where you can be able to live in today if you're looking for a place today. The good thing is we're even giving you approved architectural designs for that project. So if you buy into the land today, you get financing for the product because we already have negotiations with a couple of banks. You can get up to 100% financing and you start construction of your home today. We have Bluebells. Um, this was one of our very first projects we've had in Safaricom Investment for a very long time. So we have a very few units, less than 15 remaining. There are two phases. Phase one has three and two bedrooms. Phase two has three bedrooms. So in phase two, we have less than five units remaining and, and the balance is for the two bedroom in phase three, which most of them are rented out. So if you're an investor looking for a property that you can be able to, to plug into, I think this would be a very good project for you, especially since one, the headache of looking for tenants is gone because we've already catered out for that. And um, we have crazy offers if you buy now. Our partners, Sherry's Properties, were also on board with their latest project, Royal Gates. This project comes with a functional floor plan, contemporary clean lines, natural light, extravagant chandeliers, top-notch appliances, and custom-made cabinetry, plus a balcony overseeing the beautiful estate. Let's listen in.
As Sherry's Properties, we are exhibiting Royal Gates Kitengela, our new project. That's our second project after Royal Finesse. And today we want to show everyone that is coming to the expo that they can actually get a quality product in Kitengela, something that they can actually find in Kilimani, Kileleshwa, but we've stood in the gap and given them a good price and a good quality brand in Kitengela. Royal Gates is a gated community of uh, four bedroom townhouses and uh, it comes with four bedrooms plus uh, DSQ. So you're able to have a family of two or a family of three children who can live in the house, comfortably live in the house, plus a servant's quarter for anyone who helps them in the house. We have a swimming pool and a gym, and we also have a extra parking for the visitors who come. Actually in the house, what we have done, apart from the amenities, we've just ensured when you come in to live, you won't have to fix anything. We've fitted the kitchen, we have also done the lighting system, and everything we've finished the house completely for you so when you just come in you just you're just coming in with your furniture and maybe just a fridge the price of the development is uh, 14.9 million and uh, we have looked at different schedules you can either pay via cash or you can pay via mortgage so for both cash buyers and mortgage buyers you pay a 20 percent deposit and then for cash buyers of course you will give you a one-year period so that you can uh, finish paying if you're taking phase one. And then for mortgage buyers, of course, the bank will set all the 80%. The expected completion date for phase one is March next year, and for phase two is March 2021. I think from a personal view, when I entered the house for the very first time, what I felt was it has a home feel to it, a family-oriented home. So when, when I'm in the kitchen and I'm cooking, I can monitor my child because it's an open kitchen. I can be able to interact with the, my husband and have conversations, you know. There's a family room upstairs where we can gather together and pray in the evening. So it has a home touch to it that you rarely get in other homes. So we have not just created a house, but we've actually created a home where when you come from work from a busy day, you can actually relax and just get to have a good time with your family. Basically, my feedback for this expo is that we are very happy that uh, the people who are coming are actually the targeted market that we've been looking for. They trust Property Show and through that, they've been able to trust us because they, they trust the whole forum. So we've been able to be happy to have conversation, valid conversations with clients because we are, we've been looking for clients who can actually afford the product, clients who actually appreciate what we have done. So we are really thankful to KTN and Property Show for putting the whole forum together for us to be able to meet our clients. The one thing that matters in real estate is track record. It is a stamp of approval. Next, Urithi Housing Cooperative with a portfolio of investment options you can put your money on. At the Owner Home Expo, we are exhibiting a variety of projects in land and houses. I'll start with the houses. We have a project called Juja Annex. Juja Annex is located in Juja town along the Juja Farm Road, two and a half kilometers from the highway. Those are three bedroom bungalows uh, going for 5.5 million. We are 80% done. We'll be handing over half of the project by November of this year and the other half by April of next year. Another project we want to introduce to the market is Green Zone. Green Zone is located along Kiambu Road at Tindigwa, behind Quick Mart supermarket. It's just 500 meters off the road. Uh, we are selling a two-bedroom apartment for 7.9 million. The project is also under construction. It's around 40% sold. The show house is ready, actually, for viewing. 
and we expect the first phase to be complete by June of next year. We are also partnering with some financiers to finance uh, members who subscribe to the project. The other project that is very exciting in the market is called Austin Terrace Gardens. Those are two bedroom apartments that are located along Kangundo Road, 600 meters off Joska Shopping Center. This has been a very exciting project uh, because we are selling a unit at 2.5 million with a flexible repayment plan of up to two years without interest. It's in a gated community of two bedroom apartments with a shopping center and all the amenities on site. We have a total of 300 units. We've already sold over 70 percent. Uh, construction is already underway, about 50 percent done and we expect to hand them over in the next six months. The next project, which is also very enticing, is along the superhighway. It's called Gem Highway. Uh, it's located near Mangu High School, a shopping center called Witevie. It's a kilometer off the highway. Uh, we are selling a two-bedroom apartment at 3.5 million. The concept of that is unique because it's a two-story apartment of detached houses. So every apartment has only four units. It also has a flexible repayment plan. The expected time of completion is December of 2020. We have already started construction. We are about 50% done. For the plots, we've been able to get a variety for the, both the high end, the middle and the low. Uh, among the high end, we have a project in Juja called Birmingham. Birmingham is three kilometers off the highway along Bob Harris Road, that is just near Mangu High School. Those are serviced plots ready for development. We have a very exciting project in Malindi, a place called Sabaki. Sabaki is barely 20 kilometers from Malindi town. We are selling an acre at 150,000. We also give flexible repayment plan of 50% and the balance within six months. The land is mostly agricultural, so we also advise our members on the kind of agriculture they can undertake on the project. The Owner Home Expo has been good, it's been great. We have experienced a huge flow of potential clients. We have experienced positive feedback uh, on our project. And uh, we look forward to attending Own a Home Expo in the future because we know that we will get positive returns from attending. Another solid investment option featured at the Expo is an affordable site and service land scheme, Malkia Estate. We have uh, one of the products with a special offer, Malkia Estate. It's in Kitengela, five kilometers from Kitengela town and uh, two kilometers from Namanga Road. Plots have normally been going for 9.95, but at the Expo, we've decided to give you 15% of the price, so it will come around 8.50. So we want you to take advantage of this offer and grab a plot for yourself. At Malkia, there is water, there is electricity and there are many schools around and universities, so the project is ready for settlement. The cherry on top was the launch of our very own budget solutions for modern living, dubbed upscale homes. If you have a plot and are looking to build a dream home, this is for you. Let me break it down. What do we have on offer? We are bringing together different budget designs, a consortium including architects, engineers, financial institutions, quantity surveyors, project managers, as well as building material providers that are ready to help you jumpstart this journey. And guess what? With only 4 million Kenya shillings, your dream of getting a home can become a reality today. Just visit our offices 
and let's make the first step together. At the expo, we also got an opportunity to sample pillows, mattresses, and other comfort solutions with Superform. Here is a look. We're really happy to be at the Owner Home uh, Expo by Standard Group in association with uh, the Property Show. Uh, this is the first time we're here and the response has been amazing. As Superform, we've been in the country for over 36 years and we've been selling mattresses and pillows to the consumer of Kenya and that's what we're exhibiting here. Uh, we have a special range that we've curated just for the Expo with amazing offers. Uh, for example, we have some great memory foam pillow that the uh, consumer hasn't seen it before. So we are happy to showcase these products. So it's just uh, so our range is mattresses and pillows, but uh, in mattresses we have a huge range of different densities, different fabrics, and a lot of customization that a consumer can do. So we're showcasing all of that, and we've got a great response. We've tried to make our uh, booth as exciting as possible, and we've got a uh, exciting uh, new thing that we've introduced, which is called the spin the wheel. So we're giving the consumers a chance to win either discounts or some free caps or t-shirts. So it's been very interesting and uh, you know exciting for the consumer. This is our range of pillows from different grammages for fiber pillow and we have an entire range of uh, memory foam pillows at a very affordable price. So that's what uh, we are focusing on at this expo. These are our mattresses. This is a super high density mattress and this is our most, one of our most fast moving uh, designs. That's got very popular in the youth, so we are kind of showcasing in that and we have some great offers. So this is our memory foam uh, range of mattresses, which is ultra luxury, ultra comfort and the response that we've been getting to it is amazing. So USP that we are really riding on. You guys have done a great job. I mean, we'd love to participate again. I mean, uh, for the traffic that we've been getting to our expo uh, booth is amazing. We'd not expected it, but it's amazing. Indeed, this was a success. Let me say thank you to everybody who made it happen. Moving on, two weeks ago, the tragedy of a school building collapse dominated the headlines. This week, another building collapsed in Katamega. So how do we regulate and bring back sanity to the construction industry? Next, a conversation we started last week on protecting the integrity of buildings and tips to ensure developments are compliant with National Construction Authority. National Construction Authority can visit a site at any point in time. And when we visit the site, we want to check the compliance status of that project. What do we look out for? That has that project been licensed or registered by National Construction Authority? If it is uh, licensed, you may have said this contractor will do it, but on the ground, a different contractor is doing it. We also have to check that. You may have said this engineer will uh, do the project or will be responsible, but on the ground, a different engineer is doing it. So we flag all that out. If they are all as per what you had registered, then we say that project is compliant, in addition to following issues of health and safety. Because remember, as people are working around that site, we have to ensure that the site is properly hoarded or secured from passers-by, the general public, and also secured so that anybody inside does not just walk outside. Like, Because it's now uh, what we call um, a zoned area or a secured area for purposes of that development. The in and out is, is well controlled, isn't it? Again, we look at whether you've displayed a site signboard because this is the first point where we actually tell whether you have all the necessary approvals. So we want that properly displayed. The name of the contractor, name of uh, all the other parties, the engineer, the architect, 
the other agency's approval and NC approval. Once this is seen, we know that, okay, it's almost trending towards there. Then now we go in to check all this. Now, there's something I want to also pick up when you talk about uh, safety. We've talked about the architectural, we've talked about the structural. That is the skeleton part of the safety. When a building's done, the other services that come on board, remember? Like you need electrical services. It is not just any other person that's going to come and start running wires into your building. They say it's safe. So there's another important engineer or engineering professional called an electrical engineer. What is their work? Their work is to ensure that you have adequate lighting so that when you put it on, it's not too bright, it's not too dim. It is just exactly what you need for your use, isn't it? The capacity of the wiring within the building is also properly designed because again, if you put small wires, they might explode. If you put thick wires, it might be consuming too much the resistance, isn't it? So you need to do that balance. The other engineer that is also very important in that building is the mechanical engineer. Like if you're doing uh, your project in a very uh, harsh weather condition where you need to either cool it or heat it up, you need some mechanical air conditioning which needs to be incorporated in the design. Again, things like lift. So all these engineers work together, together with the architect and the contractor to ensure the building is safe. So what is the role of the developer in a nutshell? The developer is to ensure that he has provided enough resources to take care of all these services I mentioned. The contractor has to be fully oiled in terms of money as the project is going on. As per what they agreed, the professionals, the engineer, the architect must be fully uh, oiled and remember during project execution, there's another professional that we should not ignore that is in charge of cost control for that project. It's called the quantity surveyor. So you'll ask yourself, this building industry is full of professionals. Yes, because you need all of them. Because if you don't take care of your costs, the contract cost can skyrocket. It can uh, overrun your budget, and then you realize you didn't achieve what you are supposed to. So this quantity surveyor, first of all, at the end of the documentation, is the one that now looks at all the documents and prepares what we call a BQ, and is the bill of quantities that now the developer uses to procure a contractor to be able to implement the project. This last year, that is the 1st July 2018 to 30th June 2019, the financial year of the government calendar, as National Construction Authority, during our quality assurance visits, which is what we do to ensure that the projects are being done well, we visited more than 38,000 sites across the country because we are spread across Kenya. Out of those 38,000, only 25,000 were compliant. The remaining 13,000 were actually non-compliant, and they are actually on the basis of the issue we are raising. Some of them uh, had not uh, sought for any approval because they don't have documentation. Some of them had sought approval, but when they went to the ground, they were not carrying the work they were supposed to be carried. Some of them said, this will be my contractor on paper, but on the ground is a different contractor. Some of them also said that this is the plant we'll be using. When they went to the ground, they're using a different plant. Remember, you look at all this. Compliance means is the plan on, as, as approved is what is happening on the ground, isn't it? Is the professional, as you submitted, is the one carrying out your works on the ground? Because that responsibility and that professional undertaking must be seen across board, isn't it? So the question of people using uh, fake documents is real. But those fake documents, they don't bring them for approval. So they put them on the ground to purport that they are doing some work. But the good thing, when we go, we flag those ones out and then we close the site. What do we do when we find a site is not compliant? And it may be not compliant because of, as I said, lack of approval from the county or lack of vegetation or lack of a qualified contractor or not following issues of health and safety. Any of those can warrant us to give you a suspension notice as a developer. And uh, this suspension notice is issued to the developer of the project. And what do we do? When we issue that suspension notice and we tell you what is missing so that you are 100% compliant, we expect you to, uh, within 14 days, to bring the missing documents or documentation or, you know, do whatever is necessary so that you comply. If that does not happen, then we forward uh, you to the relevant power enforcing agencies so that they can take a necessary action against you. I want to also confirm that actually some cases go to the extent that they end up in court. Even as we speak now, there are cases which are in court. For those who are actually rogue, they won't be able to, to follow um, what uh, the law wants them to do. There is only something that maybe uh, going forward, and if it's addressed, 
it will really help in addressing this issue. For instance, uh, National Construction Authority, uh, the act that is uh, enabling our operations, um, envisages that a project requires to be registered. A contractor needs to be licensed. A worker also needs to be accredited. But if you look at the penalty side, eh, for instance, if you do not register a project, the person we can take action against actually is eh, a contractor in terms of carrying works without a uh, proper license. For the developer, who is actually responsible for registering the project, the only thing we can say is a civil wrong. You know, it's like being um, charged under a civil offence or something like that. So the penalties are very lenient, if I may use that word, in a way, uh, to the developer, in a way that they can say, I can maybe do this and live with it. But let me say this. If you want to do the right thing, everything will always remain right. Remember, if your interest is in securing your investment, if your interest is in ensuring the safety of the will-be users, if your interest is to ensure that uh, things are done correctly, then we should not even be arguing with all these issues. We should just be doing the right thing and you move on. Remember, it has been very costly sometimes that uh, if your investment goes down because of maybe an unfortunate incident like a collapse, you know, that loss is huge. Other than the investment, sometimes there's a loss of life, and so on and so forth. So mine is just to say that if, first of all, we just follow the right channels, you don't have to be hardened. You don't have to be, you know, uh, told do and this and that. But just knowing the right thing, and then we do the right thing. I think we can go very far. It's important to protect your development right from the onset. Work with professionals and get all the necessary approvals before you embark on this journey. We are taking a short break. Still ahead, a candid one-on-one -on -one perspective on the number one transport solution with Kenya Railways. 1st of June, all the way 2017 to now, we have been able to operate what we call Madaraka Express. Advantages of living in a gated community plus much, much more. Keep it proper tissue, don't go away. We are back. You're watching The Property Show, the premier platform on all things real estate. When I think of Kenya Railways, what comes to mind is ease of transport, freight services, and of course, four and a half hours to the beach. It's time for a candid one-on-one -on -one perspective on the number one transport solution. Busana, Mr. Mainga. Thank you, Madam. I must commend you for the job that is going on and what you're doing in Kenya to ease transport to all of us. Give us a breakdown and an overview of the journey and where is Kenya Railways today and where are we going from here? Uh, thank you, um, Nancy, for that. Um, over time, as you know very well, we have been managing a very old uh, railway system by the name of the Mitangin Railway Line. That is the old line that runs from Mombasa all the way to Maraba. Um, that line has run for almost 122 years. And it has served, the, it has served this country, it has been served, and it is also served in this country tremendously. If you look at the towns, if you look at our big cities, Nairobi, Kisumu, Nakuru, Mombasa. All these towns are because of the Mitangeji railway line, which really opened up the economy of this country. Mobi tea, coffee, prosper, soda hash, goes up and down 
from Mombasa to Nairobi. But then the government looked at the current situation, the line, and came up with a new project, what now Kenyans commonly call the SDR. This was conceived, and then we say from 2013, 14, 15, the idea was put in place, and we started construction of SDR around 2014, 2015. And in 2017, what now is called Mombasa and Nairobi, SER line was completed and commissioned in um, that first, let's say, first of June, we started operations. First of all, by passenger services. Now, this journey has taken the government and the Kenya Railways to dynamics of what we call modern infrastructure in the country. When we launched and the president commissioned the first uh, uh, section, what we call phase one, SDR, Mombasa, Nairobi, Kenyans did not know what kind of operations, the excitement we were getting into. But come 1st of June, all the way 2017 to now, we have been able to operate what we call Madaraka Express, that is our passenger services and also our freight services. So in 2017, immediately we commissioned the line, we started operating the passenger services. And you know what, in the first month we did not know whether the train will get full. But in two months time, that train was full with Kenyans moving from Mombasa to Nairobi, and Nairobi to Mombasa. Why? An efficient system. And then that was taking Kenyans eight to 12 hours from Nairobi to Mombasa was reduced to four and a half hours. The delays that were in our roads, where most of the commuters would spend nights along Mombasa Road, when it rains, there was an accident in the road, became a reality that you can get into Mandalaga's place from Nairobi, and within four and a half hours, you're actually in Mombasa. With, with, with a very smooth journey, very safe, efficient and timely. And over time, when you look at our statistics, we have been able to move more than 3.2 million passengers within two or three years. When we talk to our passengers, for the first class, we change around 3,000 Kenya shillings. Second class, we change 1,000 shillings. It's cheap, it's convenient for most of our people. Now, the exciting part about, and uh, I'm just spending time with you, passenger services is tourism, local, both national and national tourism became a reality because Kenyans can go to Mombasa, take a week there with their children, pay very little, enjoy, you know, the country scenery from Nairobi all the way to Mombasa, spend nights there and come back home. What are we doing? Refreshing an economy, making our people refreshed, energetic, so that they can be productive in this country. Something that has never happened before. Um, we were saying, what we call Mindo in Kamalas, or the log in Kamalas, can afford a train. Over a year, one year, a family can save, use SGR, and like there before, when you know, you go to look for a flight, it's expensive, you don't know how to save 20, 30,000. But Kenyans with 20, 30,000 can enjoy their lives in Mombasa. Spend a week. People who have never been there, SGL has helped them. So when we are looking at the, the growth of tourism, hotels in Mombasa, full, we have our 80 freight services from Mombasa. Now, historically, you know that port used to be congested. Yes. They were outcries every time that that port you cannot move your goods and services. Today, we clear the entire port. You can't hear of any congestion. Let me be very specific. We are able to load cargo from the ship to the train directly. Wow. There's no waste of time. So it's very efficient. Quite efficient. And within eight hours, we are able to deliver our cargo to Nairobi ICD. And 
So our customers, what are we doing? First of all, we are reviving this economy, the manufacturing companies who have been taking too long to import their goods and services. Key among um, what we call the industrial goods, manufacturing goods, yeah, services that we could, could not get before. So we are able to load the manufacturers and the industrialists with the goods within a short time. In fact, let me say, the problem now is where they store their goods. Because they used to wait for five months, but now within one month you find a manufacturer or a supplier who can supply within one week twice. Wow. Interestingly, we were dealing with what we call loose cargo, and these people who do their businesses in Kikomba, they go to China, they go to Turkey, they go to India, and they bring some goods. And those goods used to spend over six months along the way and in Mombasa. I'm assuring you and I'm telling you they can bring their container here within uh, less than one month, twice a month. They offload that container, take those goods to Kekomba with their wholesalers, dispose them within a week. They go back, bring others. So what are we doing? We are doing what we call trend facilitation. And the, the economy of the country grows because of infrastructure. Coming up, a story of buying a family home in a gated community with the advantages of high level security plus lifestyle benefits including access to a clubhouse, gym, swimming pool, children's play area and the list continues. I came to know about Royal Finesse through just passing by and we just saw a place and we decided to get in and check it out just in our trips that we, did, we used to do on Saturdays. So I found the place and we sat down with the people we found. They were very welcoming. We kind of knew this is what we were looking for. The key things that we saw at Royal Finesse that uh, really uh, impressed us, number one is the serenity. Okay, that time it was not complete but we got a feel of how it would look like. We, we saw in the photos, we saw what their idea was, and we really loved the end product. So we opt for, you know, going for it. So buying off plan for us was not an issue per se. Um, the issue would have been if we had not seen what it would look like, but buying off plan was not an issue for us. The process was not hard. It was, it was straightforward. We saw the guys, they took our contacts, we exchanged contacts and um, we went to the office. The, the next process was uh, now to do the, um, the offer letter. They gave us an offer letter and we discussed about the payment, we discussed about how next step after we have chosen the house, the particular location we wanted from the map and it was smooth. The financial bit was not an issue. Sharees are very flexible, they sit down with you, we, you discuss, you give them um, your payment plan, you discuss and then both of you come to terms. Um, it took almost a year, but remember we had uh, booked it off, off plan, so ours was actually the last number. We are number 78. The weight was worth it. We used to come visit like every other time. Yeah, it was okay for us to wait. We moved into the Royal Finesse in uh, November last year and it has been a perfect stay. Our children have had fun. You know, just waking up next door, there's a swimming pool outside your house. It, it has been the best thing ever. The children can play outside comfortably. You don't have to worry, there's somewhere for them to play. For a person who is looking to buy a home, I would advise that you get a home in a gated community. Why? Because there's um, enough security. Unlike when you do a standalone house, it is even less 
hectic because now there's someone who is taking care of the fundies, there's someone who's taking care of the, the end product, how it will look like, there's someone who's taking care of the outside of the house. So I'd rather someone goes for a house in a gated community. A gated community is an ideal choice if you're looking to live in a safe environment with an engaging lifestyle. At First Avenue, we have a portfolio of projects in different neighborhoods. Just give us a call and we'll be delighted to match your needs. Let me take this opportunity to thank all the stakeholders who made the first edition of Owner Home Expo a success. Asante Sana. Keep watching the property show for details on when our next expo is happening. See you next week with insights on succession planning plus a sneak peek of 25 years celebrations with Regent Management. Let's continue talking on our social media handles. As always, there is something for everyone. Kwaheri!